Good morning. God bless you. Welcome to Life Application Word on Wednesday. I want to go back and talk a little bit about uh, the fruit of the Spirit. As you remember on Sunday, if you had the chance to watch on Sunday, uh, we discussed the importance of being connected, a good connection with Christ Jesus. As in John chapter number 15, uh, Jesus said, I am the true vine and ye are the branches. And the importance of that was that we stay connected to Christ Jesus by him being uh, the way, the truth, and the life. It's important that we stay connected to Christ Jesus and have not only a connection, but a strong connection if we are to bear fruit. As the scripture said on Sunday, uh, that God is the husband man. The father is the husband man. God is the one who decides who should be cut off according to them not bearing fruit and potential damage that they can cause uh, to the vine, the potential damage that members and Christians who are not bearing fruit can cause to the body of Christ. And so he, they would have to be cut off. And he also determined, as far as his divine judgment, who should be kept and who should be uh, pruned and who should be uh, cut back and cleaned in order to bear much fruit. And so it, it, it's such a purging process, as I said on Sunday, to see who should be cut back to bear much fruit. So today in Bible study, I'm going to open up a, a short series on the fruit of the Spirit. What fruit uh, are we expected to bear in order to be kept by God instead of cast out? And so I want to go to the book of Galatians, Galatians chapter number five, and I'm going to begin my reading in verse number 22, Galatians chapter five, verse number 22. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith, meekness, temperance against such. There is no law. I'll continue reading. And they, that are, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affection and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. So very briefly, I want to talk for a moment about the importance of bearing the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit uh, in short, are the characteristics and attributes of God that he expects to see in us. These attributes and characteristics of God in us allow the non-believer to see a glimpse of God here on earth. This is why it's so important uh, that we are connected to God through Christ Jesus and it's so important that we are nourished through the true vine. And like I said on Sunday, this is the connection that we have. It's not the connection that we have with the church. It's not the connection that we have with a pastor. It's not the connection that we have with other uh, deacons and not other auxiliary leaders. It's the connection that you have with God through Christ Jesus. I cannot express that enough. It's the connection that you have with God through Christ Jesus. All of your other works are filthy rags. It's what you do in Christ for God is, is what's going to last. And it's also vitally important that we bear these fruit. It's because this is how God recognizes us here on earth by according to the fruit we bear. It's just like it's the same way we recognize fruit trees. If you see apples growing on a tree, then you recognize that as an apple tree. If you see oranges growing on a tree, then you recognize that that is an orange tree. And when God see the fruit of the spirit in us, then he recognizes us as his own. So it's very, very important. And if you, if you go back a few scriptures, I didn't want to deal with the works of the flesh. But if you go back a few scriptures, you'll see all of the things um, that works against the fruit of the spirit. You know, the same author, Paul, he said, there's a war going on in my members. 
you know, when I would do good, evil is always there. Um, in other words, there's a war going on in our members. When we want to bear fruit, the works of the flesh are always there. And it's easier to engage in the works of the flesh when you go back and read it uh, during your own time. It's easier to engage in the works of the flesh than it is to, to be disciplined enough to bear fruit. And once again, when, when, you're, when you're going through this struggle, and I'm, I'm speaking to all of us, myself included, when you're going through this struggle, you need to be mindful that, um, you know, I have to be disciplined, self-disciplined, and how it's better to do what's right than take the easy road and do what's wrong. Amen. So, and another thing that I want to point out in the beginning is that if you would read, uh, you know, a little wordplay, the Bible says the works, plural, of the flesh are, are these things, fornication, adultery, uh, uh, malice, backbiting, gossip, all of those things that are in there are different works. But when you get down to the fruit of the Spirit, Paul uses the singular word fruit because all of the fruit of the Spirit they have one purpose in your life. Works of the flesh tear you all different, tear you in all different directions, and and they have different works in your life to get to to you know captivate you into doing what's wrong. But the fruit of the spirit is singular. The fruit of, the fruit of the spirit is united, working for the same common cause, and that is to have you to be identified with God through Christ Jesus. And that is what set us apart. That is what makes us different. You know, is that our identity is not in the world. Our identity is eternal in Christ Jesus. And that's something to be happy about. That's something to be excited about because my identity my identity is in Christ Jesus. That's why the world can't understand, you know, your your peace. The world can't understand your patience. The world can't understand uh, why uh, you you respond the way you do when 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 you know violence is their first reaction and peace is yours because peace is a part of the fruit of the spirit and I want to do uh, some of the reading from my notes and I'll you know bid you a farewell but it's very important remember it's very important to bear fruit because you don't want to be cut off and like I said God will cut us off. If we're not bearing fruit, so we won't poison and contaminate the rest of the vine and the rest of the branches. Amen. God will have to cut you off before he allow you to contaminate the rest of the body of Christ. Amen. So that's also something to remember. And, and also remember, as I said on Sunday, those that are bearing fruit, God is still going to, to purge us. God is still going to clean us. God is still going to, you know, uh, cut us back from some things in order for us to ultimately bear more fruit for him. Amen. So when, when you're doing right and you're going through and you're struggling, you know, instead of getting upset and charging God foolishly, why don't you just take the time to see what God is doing in your life? You know, sometimes it may be beneficial to ask the question in your prayer closet, you know, God, show me what I'm learning in this situation. Because God is not going to allow you to go through for no reason. God, is, everything that God does in your life is for a divine purpose and a reason. We don't serve a random God. We serve a God who has planned everything out carefully and wants his will to be done in our lives another reason why we are to bear fruit and as i said a minute ago this is how we are identified in christ jesus we are identified with god through christ jesus not only by god but by other people this is how the christians are to be identified you know like i said people will come to you and say there's something different about you and what that difference is is you are not engulfed by the works of the flesh, but you are bearing much fruit. Paul used the plural, as I was saying before, Paul used the plural in describing life 
after the flesh, the works of the flesh, but he uses singular fruit, not fruits of the spirit. In the big picture, the spirit has one work to do in all of us. The spirit has one work to do in all of us, and that is to identify us with Christ, with God through Christ. Don't get confused with the with the fruit of the spirit, with the gifts of the spirit. Maybe I'll talk about that a little later on. But it is significant that the word fruit is singular. Paul is not speaking of a series of fruits that would be shared around so that one believer has one fruit and another believer has another fruit. You see, that, that's where we were talking about the gifts of the spirit. You know, no one has all of the gifts, you know. There, even even the um, in, in the church, you know, there's pastors and preachers, there's um, you know evangelists and things of that nature. The uh, some say the fivefold ministry, but it's actually to me, my understanding, it's a fourfold ministry because um, preaching and teaching, uh, they 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 go together. But anyway, that's another subject for another time. It's significant that he used the word fruit singular. Paul is not speaking of a series of fruit to be shared around meaning that one have one fruit, one have another, one have another. The fruit, like I said, is singular. And the reason why it's singular is because Paul is referring to a cluster of fruit, such in all the qualities are to be manifested in each believer. So what, what he's saying is, it's like, uh, we'll use the grapevines. It's like I was saying on Sunday, Israel was full of grapevines, and, and the grapevine was a symbol of, of uh, power and boldness. Grapevines was a symbol of fruitfulness. And so if you look at a grapevine, you will see that grapes come in clusters. And on that cluster, you're not going to have one grape, one muscadine, one cherry, one uh, pear. You're going to have a cluster of grapes. And that's, that's one fruit because everything on that cluster has the same nutrients, the same purpose for nourishment, um, the same benefits that the other has. Amen. They may not taste all the same but they have the same nutrients in them. So it's one fruit, it's one cluster of grapes. And that's the, the idea that Paul is giving us, bear much fruit. You won't see a healthy grapevine with just one grape on it, amen? You will see a grapevine with large, beautiful clusters of grapes and, that, that, and they all serve the same purpose. And that's what Paul is getting to here when he's talking about the fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the Spirit, this, the fruit that is inspired by the Spirit of God given to us by God is to is for one common purpose. Amen. And like I said, that is for us to represent the kingdom of God here on earth, to represent God himself here on earth. People to identify with your fruit. You see, it's, it's not beneficial to, to exercise the works of the flesh and try to bear fruit. Those are the ones that get cut off because you are misrepresenting what God wants to be, what God wants to have represented here on earth. If you and, 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 you know, this is hard talk, but this is this is true. This is real. This is serious. You're coming to church every Sunday. Well, when we were in church, we're about to get back to church. Well, you're coming to church every Sunday. But when you leave the church, uh, you're you're participating more. In the works of the flesh you're being you you're walking after the flesh and not after the spirit and right there coming to church every sunday you'll still be cut off you'll still be cast away and you will especially be cast away because god will not allow you to ruin the rest of the congregation that's what i said on sunday that's how the click started church that's how you know one side is going against the other side in church because of uh we are dominated more by the works of the flesh than we are bearing fruit. We're concerned more about the works of the flesh than we are concerned on bearing fruit. And and that has to change. And the first fruit of the Spirit, and I'm not going to talk about it a lot today because I want to talk about it some on Sunday, but the first fruit of the Spirit is love. And I don't believe that this was a random act by Paul. I believe the first fruit of the Spirit mentioned is love because this is the key attribute that a Christian should have. This is the key attribute that a follower of God must have. The follower of God must have love in their heart. 
And like I said, on Sunday, if you would tune back in on Sunday, I'm going to talk about love and uh, agape love uh, in particular. But uh, today, I just want to, to let you know, and I'm about to close, so I won't go into my sermon on Sunday. But I, I want to let you know that, that love is the first fruit of the Spirit mentioned because uh, this is the main fruit of the Spirit. This is the most important fruit of the Spirit. Because when you love, you can have peace. When you love, you can have temperance. When you love, you can be meek. When you love, you can expect goodness. Uh, faith comes from love. You have to love God in order to trust Him and have faith in Him. Amen. So so if, if you don't have love, you don't have anything. Amen. That's scripture as well. If you don't have love, you can do you can't do anything with love. Love even covers a multitude of, of, of sin. You know, love is powerful. And this is why this is the first uh, mentioned fruit of the Spirit is love. Because love is the foundation. Love is that emotion uh, that we have. And like I said, I want to go into that deeper on Sunday. So please join us on Sunday. Uh, Martin Luther says, It is fitting that love be the first mention because it encompasses all of the following fruit of the Spirit. Like I just said, it may even be said that the following eight terms are just describing what love in action looks like. Martin Luther said that, that love can very well be the fruit of the Spirit that Paul is talking about in the next eight items that are listed as not fruit of the Spirit. The other eight items that are listed may be describing love. And, and, and I could see where he may be saying that. It would have been enough to mention only the single fruit of love, for love embraces the other fruit of the Spirit. And that's why it's so important to begin with love. Let everything you do begin with love. I think, I think I'm going to close here because, like I said, I want to get into my message on Sunday talking about agape love and what it is. And I'm going to break that down as, as it is significant and important to what we're talking about in uh, John 15. It's very important as to what we were talking about in John 15 and Jesus being the true vine. And, um, you know, no, no other uh, love will a person have that he would lay his life down for a friend. So we want to get into that type of love on Sunday. But I want you to remember that if you're going to bear fruit, you don't want to be cut off. You want to be purged. You want to be cleansed. And you want to be available to bear more fruit for God because God is pleased when 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 we bear fruit remember he chastens those that he loves so when you are being chastened when you're being purged when you're being cut back when you're being pruned remember that you, God is doing it out of, of, of an act of love for you because he trusts you to bear more fruit so remember the basis and the foundation of everything I'm talking about, the basis and the foundation of you showing the characteristics of God. You cannot show the other characteristics of God. You, you cannot show, let me read it. You cannot, you, you cannot show um, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith, meekness, and temperance. You cannot do all of these things if you don't have love in your heart. Amen. And, and like I said, I want to talk some more about that love on Sunday and, and clarify some things. But you cannot do these things without love. Love is the groundwork. Love is the foundation of the fruit of the Spirit working in your life. Love is the foundation of you bearing much fruit for God. Amen. I, I do want to stop there. I'm not finished, but I do want to stop there. And I do want you to tune in on Sunday. I want you to join us on Sunday. Um, the post, I'll try to post it at 11 o'clock as uh, on um, the, the Assembly Chapel uh, Facebook page, our Assembly Chapel YouTube channel, and my own personal Facebook page, uh, Lamont King on Facebook. Uh, we, pay, we post our Bible studies and our sermons, so please join us on Sunday for that as we go into agape love and the love that we are required to have by God in order to bear much fruit. So I want to say uh, conclusively that I love you all. Bear much fruit. 
it is now time more than ever it is now time to to cast away and rebuke the works of the flesh it's time to walk upright it's time to be holy god says be holy because i'm holy the bible says god is love so how can you say that you have love uh, god in your life and in your heart how can you say you're full of the holy spirit if you can't love amen uh, by announcement again if you are a member of assembly chapel or if you're uh, thinking about coming to visit assembly chapel when we get back into the sanctuary i encourage you to get your vaccinations uh, i have my two shots uh, all i have was a little minor soreness in the arm that i got the shot in uh, maybe maybe just a little bit of fuzziness you know in my head and, and, you know, as far as focus and things of that nature um, I don't know if that was because of the shot or not to be honest with you but get vaccinated the more people that get vaccinated and the, the faster uh, the, the, the coronavirus numbers go down the quicker we can get back to what we are going to call normal amen so get vaccinated overcome your fear overcome uh, all of the the uh, what do you call it the stories and the fact the beliefs that this is the government working against you the conspiracies overcome all of the conspiracies do your own research don't just listen to your friends at work don't just listen to the people uh, at Walmart do your own research pray to God for yourself don't just listen to others and fall uh, into a lane of being comfortable hearing what they say because it aligns with your fear amen remember god didn't give us the spirit of fear the power of love and a sound mind amen so you use your own judgment use your own sound mind and if you are against a shot keep your mouth closed and don't try to spread that poison to everybody else amen if you if, if you earnestly feel that the shot is not good for you then allow that other person allow that next person uh, to come to their own conclusions but i want to encourage you to take the shot do your research do your praying do your due diligence and i pray that you will see that it's more good to this vaccination vaccination than it is bad and again finally uh, by announcement assembly chapel we will be having our homecoming recording uh, together as we did on easter if the numbers continue to go favorably uh, Governor Northam and Governor Cooper are lifting all restrictions on June 15th, lifting all restrictions on June 15th, if things continue to go well. I saw on TV yesterday that they're looking at the end of July as another spike. And I, I know previously we announced that <clears throat> we may go back into service on the second Sunday in July, July 11th. But with that news coming out, we may have to go back to the drawing board and relook at some things and see what happens. But we are we are are really trying to get back into the sanctuary in some form and fashion. But we need we need to be patient. We don't need to come this far and then, you know, jump the gun and, and have to take steps back. So we're going to be smart about it. We're going to be intelligent about it and we're going to be patient about it. But as for now, tentatively, we'll be back on July the 11th. But if the news continue to come out, as I heard on yesterday, we'll have to push that date back. So just, just keep in touch and um, continue to watch the videos, continue to do your own reading, continue to do your own praying, and continue to support the church with, with your time, with your attention to the videos. God bless you. I love you. A uh, big virtual hug. I love our church. I love the people who are viewing. And let, let us continue to let brotherly love continue. God bless.